Okay. Now we are recording this for anyone who can't make it live today. So um, we are here. We are here to answer any questions that you have. Uh, this is the first virtual open for inspection and technically the first open for inspection for this property. And I'll, I'll give you a few details. We've spoken to quite a few of you over the last week and probably last two, three, four weeks. Um, so for anyone that we haven't, uh, I'll give you a rundown of, of the property so far. Um, and we'll just begin. So yeah, again, just want to welcome everyone. Now, obviously, with the current restrictions that we have for COVID, uh, as you may be aware, there was some confusion this week with the last announcement by the Premier. He did mention that private inspections will be uh, soon allowed for real estate. Um, but unfortunately, that was tied up to some conditions. And some of those conditions were um, not before the 23rd of September. Now we're currently in the 4th of September. And the other conditions that were tied in with that is that uh, vaccination rates had to reach a, a minimum of 70% or so forth and COVID cases go down. So at this case, there's quite a lot of um, uh, conditions for that to happen. So we're not sure if private inspections will be allowed in two, three weeks time. Um, but I guess, you know, how it is, we don't know what the next two weeks ahead of us lie. So we just play it by ear. So at this stage, uh, and for the last three, four weeks in real estate, this has been our only uh, opportunity, I guess, to show properties to buyers. What we're going to do today, I know all of you have probably looked through all the photos and the floor plan and you've, um, you know, you've become really familiar with the property. We're very lucky because um, when we listed the property, many of you may know, we actually put the property on the market before lockdown hit. Um, it was planned to run the first open for inspection on the Saturday. And then I think lockdown came in the Friday before the Saturday. So the first inspection was cancelled. We haven't had anyone walk through this home. And you guys are technically the first people that we're going to show through today virtually. Um, because we were getting used to the in and out of lockdown in terms of real estate, we were lucky enough to do a recording of the video of the home um, before lockdown hit. And that's what I'm going to run you through today. Um, Many buyers have found the videos really helpful, um, but obviously I'm here to walk you through it. And, and if you have any questions, uh, please use this opportunity to uh, be interactive and ask the questions. If they're private questions, no worries at all. You've all got our phone numbers. You can uh, text us or email us privately, but if they're general questions, feel free to put them on the chat there. And my colleague, Osman, who I haven't introduced yet. Osman, I don't know if everyone can see you. Um, but Osman's on here. He'll be uh, monitoring the chat group to, to obviously answer all the questions. So moving forward, um, obviously, look, inspecting properties physically is the ideal scenario, but when we're restricted, we don't have that option. So we're here to make this process as easy as possible for you. After today, we will be making the property available for offers. Many buyers um, have been comfortable to make offers during lockdown. Um, and for those that uh, aren't, we're happy to sort of guide you through um, I'll, I'll talk to you about today. So um, we're going to show you the video, obviously Q&A, and then I'll talk to you about the offer process that we have, which is actually fully online. You, we don't have to meet up, obviously. Um, we've got an online offer process, and that also allows you to put in conditions such as subject to finance and building and pest inspections as well. Okay, because we want to make sure you, you guys are confident you're buying a good home. Alrighty, so just before I start, so 30 seconds about the property. Uh, the property, obviously, 35 Tomasetti. So the house is about 12 years old itself. It's been in the same owner's hands from day one. They built it. And for the last eight years, it has been their investment property. Uh, the, the, uh, the tenants that were in there were long-term tenants. They were in there for approximately eight years and recently moved out, I believe, to purchase another home. Um, so then the property has obviously become vacant. The owners have gone in there and fully refurbished it. So brand new carpets throughout, freshly painted throughout um, and any other sort of repairs or upgrades that the home needed, they put brand new downlights throughout and you'll see it through a video. That's pretty much it. Um, I've done enough talking. So what I'll do now is I'll quickly start the video and hopefully we can, Osman, if I can ask you, can you unmute yourself? Try now. Okay, good. Got yeah. it. Beautiful. Got it. All right. So I'm just going to share my screen and see if we get to the right place. So can you tell me if you see the video pop up? Yeah. It's loading. Yes, correct. Okay. Excellent. All right. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to play the video. Uh, I might pause it here and there just to explain a few things uh, even more. But as you're we're walking through, feel free to uh, keep that chat going if you have any questions there. Alrighty, and just give me a thumbs up, Osman, if you can hear this clearly. Once I start. Okay. 
So we're on the inside now of 35 Thomas City Drive in Narry Warren. This lovely home is just coming to market and has just been completed. The owners have done a really good job uh, fixing the place up. Um, and here is the final product. So this is now the front lounge room just off the entrance. Uh, you could call it the former living room, uh, which is quite a good size. You can set up TVs here or just the formal sitting space, however you like. Um, and I'll go to the other side of the room to give you an idea as well. Um, you'll notice that especially at the front of the home, it has beautiful uh, blinds, curtains, um, and you can see the master bedroom just on the other side here. So queen size bed here, very spacious. Feel free to refer to our floor plan in regards to the size of the rooms. It's actually quite a spacious home. You've got the walk-in robe there for the master. And here, of course, we've got the ensuite with a sliding door access. Here you are from top to bottom. All right. And obviously a sliding door there, which you can, you can close off. You can hear the exhaust fan going there okay, as well. Okay, so this is the master bedroom. I'll just turn around one more time. You'll see that he has ducted heating at the top and evaporative cooling as well. And continuing the look into the ceiling, this front living room here where we were, I'll scroll up. Oopsies. All right, internet looks like it's having a bit of a hard time with uh, running the Zoom as well. That's pause for everyone, I assume. Yep. We've got evaporative cooling here and ducted heating pretty much throughout the whole house, but you'll notice the really nice downlights livening the property up. All right, now we've stepped into the second living zone and you can hear probably from my voice, uh, it's a bigger room now. We've got the family. Sorry, everyone, it's usually doesn't happen, but it must be the, uh, the weight of the uh, number of, we've got approximately 50 participants on this um, virtual room. So it's probably trying to carry them all through. Uh, what I might do, if there, if anyone has their video switched on at this point, do you mind switching the video off? That might free up some of the internet bandwidth space. I'll um, and see if that helps load it up. All right. Room in terms of a lounge and TV and formal dining, quite a large space again. I can walk around this just to give you an idea. Here we are, okay, and then the kitchen on the other side overlooking both areas. So there's quite a lot of storage place in this home and I'll, I'll uh, walk you through it bit by bit. All right, so the first thing I'll notice is how big the kitchen is. It's very nice um, bench top on top, plenty of uh, bench and cupboard space and you've got overhead cupboard space as well. Here you are. And in regards to the appliances, um, you'll have no issue there because they're all, especially the oven, I've opened it before and it was like new. Check that out. There is a grill as well. There you go. Okay, named pantry space. There's plenty of it here. There's an upright um, pantry here with plenty of shelving. That's the NBN box for the new owner. And some more pantry space here, which I'll open up for you. And that goes from bottom all the way to top and all the way in. There you go. All right, so in regards to a, a dishwasher, the kitchen currently doesn't have a dishwasher installed, but you probably see here that it looks like that is probably the space for the dishwasher to be fitted. Um, or what I can see here, perfect spot for your bins uh, as well, hidden away from the rest of the home. Okay, so there's a power point. You've got double power point there, double power point right there with the kettle. Double PowerPoint there and one for your phone. All right, and I'll just give you another look at the living area from here. You'll notice the um, remote controls for the ducted heating and evaporative cooling are in this room. And I'll quickly now take you through to the other two bedrooms as well. So before we do, we walk past the linen, which I'll just open up for you. Okay, so plenty of storage space here as well. And I'm not sure if I mentioned, but the house has just been fitted with brand new carpets throughout, which is very soft and lush carpet. And you can probably tell by the lines in the carpet here. It actually is really soft under your feet. And those uh, curtains here as well. You've got the double ropes on this side. So 
freshly painted pretty much from top to bottom. The house really is ready to move into. Um, all it's missing is the new owner and their belongings. Okay, so we have the laundry on this side here. I'll just show you this. Probably a comfortable space to fit two units side by side, or you can put one on the top if you like. Um, and there is a pantry, sorry, not pantry, cupboard space on this side here for extra storage, probably all your brooms. I really like this, small things that matter, is a PowerPoint, uh, probably for, you know, your cordless vacuum cleaners, uh, your Dysons, you know, you can plug them in there while they're away and they can recharge. Okay, so bedroom number three, here we have a single bed and you can see quite a bit of floor space. To get an idea, feel free to refer to the floor plan and compare it to your home. And here we are again with hanging space and cupboard space on top and carpets all the way in and painted inside as well. All right, and what's left? The main bathroom and the separate toilets, obviously separate door um, and your bathroom, which just like the ensuite is in immaculate condition from top to bottom. Okay, and here we are with bath and vanity. I'll try and stay out of the photo there for you. So that's pretty much the inside of the home. I'll try and give you an idea of the outside. Um, we're gonna probably get a glimpse of the backyard. Yeah, it is, uh, it is raining today. So I'll quickly pop out. There's a fair bit of grass area and I'm gonna spin the camera around all the way through to that concreted area, but you'll notice the fence, it's fully fenced and private. So for anyone with pets, um, it's a pretty safe place for the pets. Okay, there we are. And the other side of the outdoors is just through here. Hopefully I can give you an idea of this as well. All right, so you'll notice the security doors and fly screens. Okay, and then we've got the uh, garage access, which I'll try and show you on this video as well, and concreted area. So no pergola at the moment, but um, perfect spot to, to put something on the side here over the concrete. And now I'm inside the single car garage, which as you can see is a remote control roller door. And it has a few hooks and shelving that's attached to the home, which will be coming with the house. Um, and this is the door to the backyard, which I'll show you. So here we have the garage. We've got downlights in here as well. And there could be potential to actually open a door through here into the front lounge. But obviously before you start knocking walls out, good to ask a builder. And obviously access to the backyard and the, the concreted area there and into the home. We just saw the clothes line as well. And I'll demonstrate the roller door. And that's about it with the extra spot at the front. All right, so that was the video. Hopefully, oh, that's a different home. Let me close that, make sure that's not gonna play again. Alrighty, so hopefully that was that was helpful in terms of a walkthrough. Uh, I can make that video available for everyone as well so you can play it back because um, it was pausing a little bit. Uh, but does anyone have any questions at all now about the home itself? Um, don't, be, don't be shy, a question that you might have is a question that five or 10 other people might have as well. So you might be helping, helping out by, um, by reaching out, feel free to. I don't know, is anyone in the chat there? I'll see if I can give everyone no questions at all. All right, looks like it was a pretty comprehensive video. Um, Paul, we yep. do have a question with regards to the uh, land size. Yes, perfect, yeah. no problem at all. All right, so I'll move on now to the, the land. Uh, give me one sec. Okay, so I'll move on now to RP data and just show a bit about the um, the home's history and the build size. Okay, so basically, as we can see here from RP data, which is core logic, real property data, um, the land size is officially measured at 300 square meters. Um, the building size is at 124 square meters. Now, many of us in Australia, we don't measure houses in square meters, but our floor plan architect has suggested that the home is about 13 squares overall. So hopefully that helps. Um, all right, now if, and I'll keep throwing questions at me, Osman, I'll, otherwise I'll just keep talking in regards to location. Yeah, go ahead, man. Yeah. Perfect. All right, so many of you may have already 
uh, sussed out the location of the home. It's actually an amazing little pocket there where it is. So firstly, it's tucked away Thomas City uh, Crescent. I did say drive before. Uh, Thomas City Crescent is a private little um, or Crescent. I can't call it street. We're pretty much only a, anyone that would live there are the only people that will drive in there. It's not a drive through place that takes you through to another street. So it should be relatively quiet in terms of street traffic. Um, but it offers a couple of other things that are really, really good and convenient as well. So for anyone that is looking for either an investment property, you know, to rent it out to a family, or you are a young family with kids, you'll notice that just on the other side of Tinks Road here, we have Fountain Gate Primary School. Um, now, if I measure that, I'm not sure, it will probably only be a couple of hundred meters. Um, here we go. Can I do that from here? Measure distance to here. All right, so it looks like 300 meters away. Um, now, I'm going to zoom in here because there is a little of a walkway, uh, walk through path, which cars can't go, but obviously that's the home. You walk up to the top of the Crescent. There's a private little walkway there. And if you zoom in, you can actually see a pedestrian or school crossing. Um, so pretty safe for the kids and they can walk straight across to Fountain Gate Primary School. And just around the corner from Fountain Gate Primary School, I'll zoom out a bit more, is Fountain Gate Secondary College, which is just here there. Uh, so excellent in regards to schooling. I have double checked the, um, the school zones for 2021 and 2022. They are unchanged. So your selected primary school is Fountain Gate Primary and your selected secondary is Fountain Gate Secondary. Um, there are also a few private schools around, but as you know, you can, you can um, apply to enter any private school that you like. Um, now, if we zoom out a bit more in terms of location, you've probably already seen that there is an entry to the freeway just at the top of Tinks Road here, so all within a short distance as well, uh, and that will take you straight into the city, um, and obviously Princess Highway, as you know, is right on the other side. With the biggest selling point is Fountain Gate Shopping Center, obviously, uh, probably what's that about a, a kilometer away. So location Paul, is, yep. Tell so me. Paul, there's a couple of questions there. Yep. Um, can we confirm if the internal garage width is only 2.5 meters? Cool. Um, I probably won't be able to confirm that today um, because I don't think our floor plan has measured the inside, has, have they? Our floor plan architect. The floor plan architect has measured, uh, but that's based on the uh, laser reading. Of course, uh, obviously the original plan comes from the builder, which we all don't have. Oh, 2.5, there it is, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so that's a, um, yeah, so 2.5. Can we confirm? I usually I usually go off the floor plan architect, um, but if we can potentially, the owners are actually on this call, on this video. So I don't know, guys, if uh, speaking directly to the owners, do we still have uh, initial drawings of builders' drawings? If you can let us know, either shoot me a text message or in the chat group, because if we can get the initial drawings, that'd be great. We can um, shoot them off. They'll confirm, obviously. You okay. know. Yeah. Well, one more thing, Paul. Um, there's a couple of questions here, but maybe some uh, are not able to type through. Can you probably unmute um, yeah, the uh, microphone so people can uh, ask questions? And there's another question here. A question here: If uh, there is uh, easement in relation to the property, if there is, uh, whereabout is it? Did you say easement? Yes. Yeah. Really good question. Okay, so that would definitely be in the section 32. However, mm -hmm. I'm going to try and find it here through RP data, which might take a couple of seconds. So give me a second. Um, so for anyone that doesn't know what an easement is, it's basically pipes, pipelines underneath, oopsies. It's basically pipes underneath uh, the, the house, the land, not the house, where um, it's usually council property and um, it could be the Southeast water going through or anything like that, um, where we're not allowed to build a shed or uh, anything on top of without a permit. So usually I can go here and select easements. I'm not sharing my screen, am I? No. Okay, I'll share my screen. So I can click easements here and see if there's any easements going through the land. Okay, so it looks like there is an easement going across uh, the back of the houses there. Um, and it looks like a couple of our friends, our neighbours have put a shed, obviously just behind that easement. So there will still be room to put one. Um, 
And if you do require one, feel free. To, the, the best advice is to obviously ask them, the, the builder that's going to come out and build it or the shed people, they've got access to all this to make sure that they don't build that on top of an easement. So looks like there is um, that section there in the top left-hand corner for a shed or anything like that. Hopefully that answers that question. Yeah, Paul, could you uh, maybe try and unmute uh, everyone? And uh, I think everyone? I have. Yeah, yes? so okay. I, think, I think everyone now can unmute themselves if you like. Yes, you can unmute your microphone if you have any questions. Uh, Paul and myself will be happy to answer because I know some of you guys may have uh, um, some questions in ahead and uh, not. So I've seen. Time. I've seen a question there um, in regards to the section 32, the building envelope restriction. So I'll just explain what a building envelope is for everyone. So as you have the parcel of land, the council provides a building envelope, which is it's a nice fancy way of saying, um, I guess, a smaller parcel inside the block of land that you're allowed to build up to. Um, now, as it goes with any pergola or anything like that, um, you would usually to get a permit, you'd have to go through, um, the builder would apply to get a permit for that uh, once they supply the drawings to the council. So just to give you an example, I've also, we've also sold properties where um, owners have gotten permits from councils to build over an easement as well. So you can, you, they don't fully restrict you. It's just that the council wants to know if you are going to build something on top of there so they can check it to make sure that it's not gonna cause any future issues. Uh, Ruth just asked the land size. So we've um, land size is at 300 square meters. All right, so keep the questions rolling in. Hopefully they're helpful for you and everybody. Um, and uh, if there aren't any further, yeah, perfect. I was just gonna talk about offers. Thank you, Nikki. All right, so the process from here, if you are interested, if you, first of all, if you need any other questions, um, feel free to email us. Um, you've got our email addresses and our phones. We'll answer them openly. Now, from today, we are opening up our offer process. Um, you can place an offer online if you like to. Uh, we will text out everyone the link where you can do that. It's simply uh, offerprocess.com.au. So if you want to write that down, offerprocess.com.au. Otherwise, we'll email it out to you and send you a text. So if you jump on that website, um, you can basically go through the step-by-step -step and say, look, this is my name. This is my number. This is uh, my current postal address. And then it will start asking questions in regards to your offer. Um, and uh, why don't I quickly pull it up so I can show you guys. Um, all right, so it's this website here, offerprocess.com.au. Okay, so once your offer goes through this website, it will be kept private between yourself and us. Um, buyers will not be able to see your offer, other buyers, um, as it is a private sale process. So I'll talk about that as well, um, that all offers will be kept private. So as, it, as you walk through, you basically select the property you wanted to put an offer in for, and you simply just put in your offer price, deposit amount, and he has questionnaires here. Um, do you have pre-approval? Yes or no? Obviously, if you don't, we can help connect you with the right person that can help you. Um, would you like to make your offer subject to finance or do you already have finance approval? If yes, how much will you be borrowing? Would you like a building and pest inspection? Um, we, we always recommend for buyers to pull out a building and pest inspection for every home because you know it's a small investment for uh, to check that your big investment is safe. And preferred settlement dates. Every buyer can choose their preferred settlement date. Um, if you have one that suits you best, just feel free to jump on here and pick your favorable one. In regards to the owner's preference, I had a couple of buyers ask me uh, yesterday. Uh, the, the home is currently vacant. The furniture inside it is display furniture, really. So the home is available for someone to move into, I guess, as early as two, three, four weeks time. Uh, so feel free to, I guess, uh, obviously, the owners are not in a particular hurry, so it doesn't have to be a 30-day settlement. It could be 60 or 90. Um, obviously, they'll, they'll consider all offers. Um, so feel free to put in here what suits you bet best and better. Uh, that's about it. Some other notes you can make here. And, um, and then you can click Submit at the bottom there. And our Section 32, if you haven't received it already, you can download it from here. And this is a sample contract. If your conveyances or solicitors ask for a copy, you can download this one and send it to them. Uh, once the formal offers will be presented, they'll, all the details will be entered into this contract to sale. So hopefully that's pretty straightforward. Now, usually the questions that we get asked, unless there are, you can, um, you can interrupt me, Osman. Um, yep. 
Yep. Usually the questions we get asked from here is how do I go about putting an offer? Obviously, is that way there? The next question is what happens if um, my offer will not be accepted or what if there are higher offers? So the difficult thing with here, it looks like we'll most likely get multiple offers for this home because it is um, a beautiful home and really well priced. Uh, in regards to our price range, I just want to point out, obviously, 595 to 654. Um, we price our properties, um, I think, obviously competitively, but at the same time, reflecting what our owner's expectations are. So just like you can imagine, every owner would probably want you know to sell for as much as possible. We usually say something at the top end of our price range would represent quite a strong offer. Um, so long as there's no other buyers, obviously, around that price, then sometimes buyers have opted to go higher than that price range as well, which would become a lot more competitive. Now, being that it's a private sale, not an auction, we won't be able to disclose where the other offers are. At the same time, anyone that makes an offer, we're not going to disclose to anyone else where your offer is. Um, so we do encourage you to put your best and final offer through. What will happen if we do get multiple offers, which it looks like it will be, um, we'll simply take the top three offers in terms of price, terms and conditions and present them to the owners on contract of sale. All righty. So now in terms of how long somebody asks, when are we closing offers? We don't want to rush you. We want everybody to make sure that um, uh, we want to make sure that everyone's got enough time to make an informed decision. So our offer process will be open from today until Tuesday. So this coming Tuesday, we'll have about three, one, two, three days. And we'll be closing the offers on Tuesday at 12 p.m. in the afternoon. From that point forward, nobody else will be able to make an offer because we want to keep it fair to everyone that's made the time who's attended today. All righty. So after Tuesday, 12 p.m., we'll do what we call closing offers. No more offers can be made. And then from those offers, the top three will be selected and presented to the owner from there. Generally from this process, um, the properties do sell on the Wednesday uh, of the week. So um, hopefully that, that explains the offer process um, nice and easy for everybody. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot them through now or um, obviously through our emails and text messages as well. Any other, is that helpful at all, guys? Yeah, I can see a couple of heads nodding there. Mm -hmm. Rachel's partner is scratching his head. Oh my God. Rachel's what partner is scratching his head. <laughs> what offer are we going to put? Yeah. I've sent you guys the uh, text uh, to the link for the offer process on your mobile phone. So feel free to check that after this. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Brad. Glad it was helpful for you. Yeah. If anyone else has any other questions, otherwise, um, let us know if, uh, yeah, hopefully that makes it a little bit easier. Actually, I did see a question there saying, can we make an offer subject to a viewing? Um, the only issue with that is with the current COVID restrictions, we're not allowed to do any viewings. So I guess the short answer to that is unfortunately no. And especially because the potential to do private inspections is so far away, we're looking at about three weeks. Um, um, I believe the majority of offers that will come in that won't have that condition will be more appealing, not just to this owner, but to every owner because they'll, they're in a position to sell and make a decision now. Um, however, I guess the closest thing we can provide to a viewing is if you make your offer subject to building and pest inspection, and that way you can contract a, a professional building inspector to go out and inspect the home for you and make sure that there's no any issues, no major issues with the home. And that will be part of the contract. Um, so hopefully that that is helpful. Uh, beautiful. We've got a request for the YouTube link for the video, so I'll send that out as well. Um, all right. Looks yeah, like oh, so. Yeah. Um, just before we all go, yep. uh, I'd like to thank everybody again for your time and uh, your attention this morning's uh, virtual inspection. Uh, obviously, a lot of you are first home owners. But with your network of uh, friends and relatives, uh, just so you know, you're one of the best uh, team in Air Warren South. If you have any uh, uh, friends or relatives or anyone you know that want to sell or rent the property in Air Warren South, uh, feel free to give us a call. We're uh, more than happy to help everyone to give the um, market update. Is that right, Paul? Yeah, absolutely. Always, mate. Fantastic. Yeah. And um, okay. Obviously, the, this virtual, we, you know, we've had to adapt, not just as agents, but everybody, the whole community in terms of virtual. And it looks like this might be the new way forward, depending how long COVID is in our lives for. But yeah. 
Yeah. Um, all good. All right, beautiful. Thank you everyone for your time. I uh, hope you have a really good Saturday and we look forward to helping you over the next coming, coming couple of days. Thanks guys. Thanks, good guys. luck. All the best. See you later. Bye bye. See ya. All right. And everyone would usually slowly pull themselves out of the meeting. Okay. So, um, I was still live on Facebook, so I'll close that. Actually, before I close the live on Facebook, just in case anybody's watching. So guys, that was obviously a, um, a virtual inspection. Um, this is what we've been doing for the last couple of weeks, uh, obviously through the lockdown. And um, in the last two weeks, we've sold five out of five properties that we've done this for. And hopefully this one will be six out of six. Um, and... Yeah, some buyers are really adapting to the new virtual world of buying and selling real estate. Um, and it looks like this is the thing. And we're obviously going to keep innovating and finding new ways to make it easier for, for people to, um, to, buy, to buy homes. Um, all right, cool. Uh, I could see a couple of people still on. Did you guys have any other questions at all before we shut the meeting? Joanna, Praveen, all good? Oh, good. All right. I'll stop the recording now. Thanks, everyone, for watching.